Hey guys, today I wanted to walk you through my nighttime routine to boost fat loss and muscle building potential and the science behind why I do each and everything that I do to prep my body to get the best night's sleep possible and also the science behind how doing that can help maximize fat burning and muscle building potential. Now you might be thinking, Marissa, I'm trying to lose some fat. I'm trying to get lean, toned for summer or whatever you're trying to do. How is sleep gonna help me do that? Well. Here's the thing, there are four pillars of health. We all know about the first two, exercise, nutrition, fairly commonly talked about, but the other two super important ones that are just as important as exercise and nutrition when it comes to your health goals or your physical goals, sleep and stress. All four of these pillars of health are interconnected and if any one of them is off, it is going to make each of the others less effective in itself. Now, I could make a whole video all about just the four pillars of health and how they are interconnected and how you can maximize each to like maximize your goals, but this video is about my nighttime routine, so let's focus on sleep. Sleep has a huge impact on how the body functions on a cellular level, and the amount of sleep that you get per night can have a drastic effect on body composition. Now, sleep has direct effects on the other pillars of health in many different ways, but let's just go over a few. Poor sleep can cause major metabolic disruption and glucose issues. One good example of this is that poor sleep reduces glucose utilization in the brain and glucose is what your brain needs to literally function. So if it can't utilize it as well, it's going to make you crave glucose, which is just pure sugar. So your body is literally going to be driving you to go eat the donut, go dump a bunch of sugar in your coffee, just eat all the things with the sugar. Poor sleep also downregulates leptin, which is the hormone to signal that you are full and satiated, and upregulates ghrelin, which is the hormone that tells you that you're hungrier. So you feel hungrier, and it's harder to feel full. And just one night of sleep deprivation can make you as insulin resistant as a person with type 2 diabetes. Now, granted this effect is temporary and goes away as soon as you do get a good quality night's sleep, but we all know that insulin resistance makes it very hard to lose fat. And so if like three or four days out of the week, you have a lot more insulin resistance, that's not helpful if you're trying to lose some body fat. Poor sleep also disrupts the microbiome of your gut, which of course has other pervasive effects, like affecting your mood, affecting your ability to digest and process foods, just generally affecting your metabolism, all that. And when it comes to how sleep can affect the exercise pillar of health, we've all been in the place where you got a poor night's sleep, went to the gym, and you just couldn't perform as well. But not only does poor sleep affect the effort that you can put in in the gym, it also affects the recovery from the workout. It's during sleep that the brain releases hormones that are directly responsible for muscle protein synthesis and muscle growth, including human growth hormone and testosterone. More than 70% of human growth hormone secretion occurs during slow wave stage three sleep. So maximizing your body's time in this deep stage of sleep is key to maximizing muscle growth as well as body composition. And then when it comes to how sleep affects the stress pillar of health, I think we just have all experienced those days where you just don't get enough sleep and everything irritates you and stresses you out and you're just a little ball of stress because you haven't gotten enough sleep. Elevated stress elevates cortisol, which generally makes fat loss and muscle building a lot harder. So hopefully by now it's clear why if you have any sort of aesthetic goals, you should be prioritizing good quality sleep. But why should you have an actual sleep routine? Why can't you just go to bed, get quality sleep, wake up, and be good to go? First of all, having a consistent sleep schedule actually aids in good quality sleep. So you are going to get better quality sleep, more efficient and effective sleep, if you're consistently going to bed and waking up around the same time every single day. Studies have shown that irregular sleep patterns can alter your circadian rhythm and your levels of melatonin, which is the hormone that signals to your body that it's time to go to sleep. So if your melatonin can't have a consistent 24 hour cycle, you disrupt your sleep basically. So having a consistent nighttime routine can really help set you up with a consistent rhythm and consistent cycle. But what a routine also helps with is that it cues your body that bedtime is approaching. And so your brain can start shifting towards sleepiness and the brain waves associated with sleepiness before you even get in bed. So once you fall asleep, you're already closer to being in that brain state that's going to maximize the effectiveness of your sleep. Kind of like Pavlov's dogs where he would ring the bell, give the dogs a treat, and eventually he would ring the bell and the dogs would just salivate without getting the treat. You're kind of like ringing the bell to your brain that you're about to go to sleep. And so your brain starts salivating or getting closer to the sleep state before you actually get into bed. So without 
further ado, there's been a lot of ado, but without more ado, let's get into the specific things that I do to promote better sleep within my sleep routine. If you're excited to see my sleep routine, give this video a little thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, because well, why not? And let's, let's, let's get into it. Step one of my routine is to stop eating about two hours before I'm planning on going to sleep. So usually this means finishing up my chocolate, which is what I have like 95% of the nights for dessert. And this is absolutely not because late night snacking directly promotes fat gain. That is a myth. Studies in fact show that your BMR or your basal metabolic rate while you're asleep is basically the same as when you're awake. So it's not like you burn calories differently while you're asleep. I choose to stop eating about two hours before bed because eating close to bedtime actually impacts sleep quality, which can in fact in turn impact your body composition, but it can also negatively affect your brain health. Pretty much anytime you eat, it causes a spike in blood sugar. And if you eat too close to bed, you will spike your blood sugar and then it will crash while you're asleep. And this will flip the balance of cortisol and melatonin while you're asleep, which will completely disrupt your sleep quality. Here's the thing about cortisol and melatonin. What's supposed to happen is in the morning, cortisol will rise and then in the evening, it'll start to taper off. Whereas melatonin will be low in the morning and then start to rise as you get close to bedtime, peaking while you're asleep and then falling closer to the morning. If you're asleep and your cortisol is low like it's supposed to be and your melatonin is high like it's supposed to be, then you get a blood sugar crash and it switches. That's not good for sleep quality. So I finish my chocolate or dessert or whatever like two-ish hours before I wanna go to bed. So about an hour to an hour and a half before I want to go to sleep is when I actually like start my routine routine. And this starts with a shower. First of all, because it's just very calming and relaxing. Warm water is very nice. It's just like a gentle hug. But also the rise and then subsequent fall in body temperature from being in the shower and then getting out of the shower actually promotes drowsiness. So nighttime showers, you got something going for you. After my shower, I do my full skincare routine and all that good stuff, none of which is like particularly sleep promoting. So we're just gonna fast forward through that. But if you're interested in my skincare routine, I will link it down in the description box below. After that, I make a nice warm cup of tea just because I personally find it very calming. I have been a diehard tea drinker all of my life and I love it so much. I'll usually pick a tea like Tulsi tea, which can help promote sleep or something that has like ashwagandha or other sleep promoting herbs in it. Or sometimes I'll just go with a regular peppermint tea. It kind of just depends on what I'm feeling like drinking. And this is when I get to the fun part, or at least what I think is kind of the fun part. And it's definitely like a critical step for me if I want to get really good sleep and really maximize my sleep quality. And this is getting rid of all blue light in my room. Now, blue light is a wavelength of light that's actually beneficial during the day. Like, it's not a harmful wavelength of light. Like, during the day, it can promote regulating your circadian rhythm, which is key. It can boost focus, it can boost attention, it can boost mood, but during the night, it is actually disruptive to your circadian rhythm because it basically is telling your brain, hey, it's still light out. So if you're exposed to blue light before you go to sleep, this will disrupt your sleep quality and confuse your circadian rhythm. So usually while I'm waiting for my cup of tea to cool down, I will go around my room and turn off all of my lights and just turn on my little Himalayan salt lamp and light all of the candles around my room. Sometimes I'll turn my ceiling lights red if I still want a decent amount of light in here without getting any blue light, but usually that's a little bit excessive for me. But this orangish reddish hue that this creates in my room will have basically little to no blue light in it. At this point, it honestly would be ideal to avoid any screens, computer screen, phone screen, TV screen, etc. but gonna be honest, I'm not at that point yet. I'm still using my phone and my computer right up until I go to sleep. Would it be better without it? Yes. Am I working on it? Yes. Will we get there? I don't know. But because I still plan on using my phone and my computer, I make sure that those screens have minimized blue light coming from them as well. So I'll put my phone into red mode and I use flux on my computer, which just naturally turns the computer screen more yellow after the sun goes down. And then for added protection, I will throw on my blue blockers. Once the sleep ambiance is set in my room, this is when I like to take any sleep supplements if I want to supplement that night to support my body a little bit better. Now, I don't like to rely on any supplements. I was relying on supplements a lot going through my healing journey and hormone balancing journey, but that's because my body just needed a little extra hug. It needed a little bit of support. But now that I'm mostly healthy, I like to take my supplements kind of on an as needed basis. So if I know that like my sleep quality has just been suffering the last few nights, or maybe I just haven't gotten enough sleep the last few nights or I've been training like really hard in the gym and maybe I just need to up my sleep quality or like whatever the case is, if I feel like I need a boost, I will pick the supplement that I just intuitively kind of feel like is going to be best for that night. 
Now, one of my absolute, absolute favorite supplements that helps my sleep a ton and has also helped a lot of my clients is the Sleep Blend from Ned. This is a full spectrum CBD extract that has extra CBN. CBN is a cannabinoid just like CBD, but it is best known for its sleep enhancing effects. So as this is a full spectrum hemp extract, it has all of the various cannabinoids in it, but it is most rich in CBD and CBN. For this blend, Ned also picked a particular strain of hemp that is highest in some of the terpenes that also promote optimal sleep quality. And then on top of that, there's a bunch of sleep promoting botanicals like skullcap, valerian, oat straw, lemon balm, chamomile, passionflower, all of that good stuff. Ned's CBD products in general have been a game changer for me when I was going through topical steroid withdrawal and literally couldn't sleep. It was like the one thing that actually helped promote like getting sleep that was quality enough for me to feel like a functional human being the next day and that was saying something so I will live and die <laughs> by their products but if you're struggling in the sleep department especially the quality sleep like you're getting eight hours but you're waking up feeling groggy you're not feeling refreshed you're just kind of feeling like eh, don't really want to be awake right now in the morning this could help a lot and then another product that I've been loving from Ned also is their new magnesium called Mellow. This has actually been mind blowing. Like I've taken multiple different kinds of magnesiums before and this is just, I don't know what they did with this, but it's amazing. Like you take it and you wake up and you feel so good. Like it feels like you get more extended, deep, restful sleep. So if you feel like you've tried all the magnesiums out there and none of them have helped, like I encourage you to give this last one a try. It may or may not change your life. And if you haven't tried magnesium, 75% of people are deficient in magnesium. So like most people should probably be supplementing with it anyway. And magnesium deficiency results in insomnia, restlessness, and difficulty sleeping. So if you're not currently supplementing with magnesium and your sleep quality is currently not optimal, honestly, I would start with a magnesium supplement. And I definitely recommend this one. Mellow is made from a combination of three highly functional and bioavailable forms of magnesium, including magnesium L-threonate, which is one of my favorite forms because it also supports brain health. One study took adults aged 50 to 80 and after just six weeks of supplementation with magnesium, L3 and 8, they showed significant improvement in cognitive function. Another study demonstrated that it enhanced the synaptic plasticity in the hippocampus, which is the center of learning and memory in the brain. So if you're in school trying to do all sorts of learning, or if you're literally just a human that wants to maintain good cognitive function and memory throughout the rest of your life, magnesium could help. If you want to try either of the Ned products, I do have a discount code. Fit and Nerdy gets you 15% off. I will link these down in the description box below, or it gets you 20% off of the North Star membership, which is the just membership program, which comes with all sorts of perks. I highly recommend, like if you want to make any of these like a regular part of your life. But yeah, definitely check that out. But the other two supplements that I absolutely love ashwagandha. I have been talking about ashwagandha for years, like basically since I started this channel, so it definitely deserves a mention in this video. Ashwagandha is an adaptogen that has all sorts of benefits, but its main benefit is helping balance cortisol. And as we talked about earlier, cortisol and melatonin are inversely related. Melatonin helps you sleep. If cortisol is too high at night, your melatonin can't rise to adequate levels to get you efficient sleep. So if you take ashwagandha, it'll help balance out your cortisol, bring it down at night, so you're your melatonin can rise appropriately. This has been one of my go-tos for literally years. I have one left in this bottle. I just reordered a new bottle. I'll link that down below too. Also, I definitely recommend that brand. I've looked into a lot of different pill forms of ashwagandha and there's like only one or two that are actually like top quality. Did a lot of research, trust me. But this last supplement is a GABA promoting supplement from Natural Stacks. GABA is a neurotransmitter in the brain that basically promotes calmness and relaxation. Its main role is as an inhibitory neurotransmitter that basically calms down anything excitatory in the brain. And if you're trying to go to bed, things are exciting you, it's gonna be hard to go to sleep. So GABA will kind of just like help chill you out. The one supplement I don't recommend that I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions about is melatonin. Here's why. Melatonin is legit a hormone. So you are supplementing with a hormone in order to sleep better. And this means that the more you take it, the more adapted your body gets to it, and the more your body down regulates its own production of melatonin, so you literally become dependent 
on the melatonin. Like it will create a physiological addiction to it. Melatonin can be great for like resetting your sleep schedule or for recovering from jet lag, taking it temporarily. But if you start getting the habit of taking it every single night, it'll make it harder and harder for you to fall asleep and get quality sleep without it. After I take my supplements, I will get myself started on a little red light therapy. This is something that I started incorporating during my healing journey from topical steroid withdrawal. And I noticed such extreme benefits from it that I've just kind of kept using it. It helps so much in healing my skin, but red light therapy has so many other benefits. It helps with sleep, which is obviously why I'm including it in this video. It can help with muscle recovery. It can help with mental performance. It can help with skin. It can help fight inflammation. It can boost your immune system. Like it does all sorts of crazy cool things. And with sleep specifically, studies do in fact show that the wavelengths of red light can in fact penetrate your skull and reach your brain. And this helps support longer, deeper, more restful and efficient and effective sleep. You might be wondering, Marissa, how can shining a red light at your face make you sleep better? Well, let me just explain real quick how red light therapy works. Red light therapy, or more scientifically, photobiomodulation, affects cellular respiration and makes it more efficient. Cellular respiration is a process by which the body breaks down food and converts it to ATP, or energy. This is the process that your body needs to do for like literally everything. So the more efficiently your body can produce ATP, the more efficiently your body can do literally anything. During cellular respiration, nitric oxide competes with oxygen in the production of ATP. So more nitric oxide means less ATP is produced. But the photons in red and near infrared light excite electrons in nitric oxide, making hydrogen more easily able to bond and thus improving the efficiency of production of ATP. So that's a TLDR on how photobiomodulation can have such widespread effects is because it's literally just making your cells function better. I've been using Juve to do my red light therapy since I started doing it, and they recently came out with their Juve Go 2.0, which has been super, super helpful. A, it has a recovery mode that you can use. B, it has an ambient mode that you can use, and this is a mode particularly to use at night because it's particularly designed to support sleep and circadian rhythm. I'm actually pretty sure I have a discount code with Juve if you wanna check it out. I think Misfit and Nerdy gets you like $50 off your order, so I'll link that down in the description box too. Once I'm done with all that, I have usually about half an hour to an hour to kinda do with as I please to let myself wind down for bed in my perfectly optimized sleep environment. And this is when I do my life enhancers, which is not actually a thing. It's just kind of what it feels like I'm doing. I'm enhancing my life for the hour before I go to bed. And this is just basically set aside as a chunk of time to let my brain and body just kind of unwind, not be doing anything that's gonna be super stimulating or exciting, just kind of letting myself drift closer to sleep. So during this time, I will read a book or read a screenplay. I'll do an online class, obviously not one that's like super intensive, but like something that I can just kind of like chill and listen to. I also like taking this time to just sit back and listen to podcasts or audiobooks, or I'll do some meditation or some breath work if I'm feeling like doing that at night. And this is really the core of my sleep routine because this takes up the most amount of time. And it's just a buffer between awake, stressful work life and doing all of the things and then sleep. And after that, it's basically time for bed. And at this point, I've spent about an hour with zero blue light, zero stimulation from anything, just kind of chilling, relaxing, drinking my nice warm cup of tea, letting my body just breathe. If you want to get results as fast as possible, whether it be losing fat or building muscle or boosting exercise performance, and you're not getting good quality sleep or enough sleep, fixing that will change the game for you. Like a hundred percent guaranteed. Even if you think you're getting good sleep, like you're sleeping eight hours, you wake up feeling all right, you have decent energy throughout the day, but maybe you need like two cups of coffee to make it through the day. Give these tips a try then come back to me. Tell me how much quicker you got to your goals. For me also, my nighttime routine has kind of become my happy place. It's been a way of implementing self-care just because I love it. It's me setting aside time just for me. And it's been really, really valuable to be able to do this most nights. Now, if only I could lock in a morning routine that also makes me feel really good. We're still working on that. Comment down below if you have any tips for like building a morning routine that actually feels really good. Cause I'll go a couple weeks like stretches where I have a good morning routine and I just fall off the wagon. I'm not a morning person. Even when I get good quality sleep and I feel good, I'm just, I'm not a morning person. <laughs> So please leave your morning routine tips or your current nighttime routine down in the comments below. If you liked this video, give it a big thumbs up. It really does support me and my channel. I really appreciate it. Please share this video with your friends, your family, and your neighbors. If you wanna see more videos from me all about health and fitness, you can check them out over here. To see future videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit the little notification bell so you're notified when I post a video and I will see you 
very soon. Bye!